Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, happy Valentine's Day. Jesse Warden here. We're going to talk about code coverage, showing how to install it, how to configure it, how to set it up. What is code coverage? Code coverage means out of this entire set of code, how many things on it have unit tests? Is there any visual way to, or mathematical way to identify what those are and output a report? Why, yes, yes, there is. I'm glad you asked, Jesse. Answer yourself. It's called Istanbul. There are many other reporters out there and they're all wonderful. So normally when you run unit test, I'm gonna go NPM test. It'll run a unit test and show four, four passing and they run really fast. But we, we don't have any indication of kind of like where we're at. Are we doing good at unit testing? Are we doing bad? Code coverage is one of those many metrics. It's not the best metric, it's easy to game. You can actually put unit tests that say true should be true. And you can make sure that your unit test and the methods that you're testing don't actually throw exceptions. You don't actually call them, you know, like with any parameters, you just make sure they do or do not throw. Gaming code coverage is very possible, but it's one mini metrics if you use positively, say, how are you doing? And as your code goes over time, let's say six months or even just six weeks, how is it doing? Is my code coverage higher than it when I started? What is my progress? Am I making progress? My code has grown. Have I managed to even just maintain the code coverage at the level that it's at? Let's install this guy. The first step we have to do is npm install something called Istanbul, not East Constantinople. We'll do save dev. This will install it in our dev dependencies and inside of our node modules, it's in there. So we can go to our package JSON. We'll create a new script called coverage and good news people, you only have to do this once, okay? So it looks weird, it is. You don't have to memorize it, just copy pasta for my video and call it a day. Istanbul is a command line tool. Since we run it inside of NPM, NPM knows that if you're calling things like this, it knows to look in your node modules folder. It doesn't have to do dot node modules, right? And then dig down in the folder. You don't have to do any of that. If you just do it here, you're good. Running Istanbul and command line, it has a series of operations. The one we care about in this case is cover for code coverage. And we're gonna use Mocha to actually run the test, generate the coverage data, and then Istanbul will interpret that into numbers. We only have one test for now, so we wanna instrument just this test. A controversial thing is dash X or exclude from report. I'm gonna actually exclude all unit tests from the report. This is controversial mainly because you're not gonna have a unit test for your unit test, but excluding the unit test from report actually shows if the unit test itself correlates with the code you're writing. And what I mean by that is I encourage you in your own time to actually remove this portion, run it and see how some parts of your unit tests that are clean and test one thing are green and the ones that aren't are red, right? So think about that. Think about how your test is doing a lot to test something. You shouldn't stress it. Don't, don't overthink it, but it's definitely something that's I find kind of interesting. Let's make sure we spell Istanbul right. Sorry about that. I should have copy pasta coding for the win. When I don't copy pasta, I fail at life. So we'll do npm run coverage and it'll run our unit test, but then it does something down here that's kind of interesting. It generates a report of percentages on your statements, which are your lines of code, your branches, which are all your if-then statements. We have eight and only two of them are covered by unit tests, so it's 25%. Functions are all your functions, your expressions, your error functions, those kind of things, and just general lines of code. But even more interesting is that this coverage folder that it makes every time you run this command has all kinds of other metadata for a lot of other things that know how to deal with code coverage and reporting and things like that. All we care about tonight is LCOV report index.html. And what it'll do is give us a wunderbar visual HTML report. So let's create one more command so we don't have to open this manually each time. We'll say show coverage. We use the shell command of open, which should work on Windows too, I believe. Coverage folder, LCOV report, or something coverage, I forget what it stands for. Sorry, long day guys. And HTML. So now we can run npm run coverage. I'm sorry, show coverage. And it'll open the HTML page. You know, you'll notice that some's red and some's yellow. This is our, our folder, our, our project we're working in. So I'm gonna go inside of it and you'll see our one file. Larger projects actually have a lot more folders and files, obviously. We just have one tonight. Yellow means you don't have a lot of coverage here. You should be concerned. Red is unacceptable. <laughs> so you can configure your builds and things in code to only accept a certain level of coverage or perceived level of quality. Remember, code coverage is one of many metrics, not the metric, okay? Some tests are more important than others. The default, I believe, is 80. I personally think if you've never done this before, start at five, start at 10, and maintain it for at least three weeks. If you can do that, you're amazing. If you've never written testable code before, let alone unit tests, it's very, very difficult to not just make five to 10%, but also maintain it. 
So don't stress that number. It's just a, a metric of quality. If we click in it, we can see that this constructor, because he's part of class, all the other unit tests that actually create the person, although they don't test constructor directly, indirectly they do test it. And this is how OOP helps a little bit from an API perspective that code coverage is really good with functions. It's very clear what's tested or not. But with classes, if you can't really test, like let's say you come from Java or C Sharp or languages that have private and protected, you can't necessarily easily unit test those without weird tricks. The simplest way is to test a public API. In person's case, everything's public. For constructor, as long as you knew a person, you're testing the constructor. Now, you'll notice that we wrote unit tests for roll dice. Why is that not there? This is a very, very, very common mistake. I do it all the time. See this? It's only instrument for the test that actually runs. So remove this and rerun all your tests, right? So we run npm test. We see we have a lot more tests, nine instead of those five. Then if we run npm run coverage again to regenerate that, we get a bit higher numbers, right? Up in the 60s. Our branches are still bad of two of eight, but you know, a little bit better. Then you can simply go back to the web browser and refresh. Voila, we have a lot more, not that many tests, but it shows you what the coverage numbers around those are. So we can scroll down and notice that we don't have any tests for our attack yet or add equipments, remove equipment, but we've inadvertently tested calculate equipment mainly because of the constructor. Every time you call it, you merely pass in an equipment array and then it recalculates. That is code coverage using Istanbul. This is the report that you can actually generate with it. And again, don't stress about code coverage numbers. It's more important to make good surface testing, find the functions that blow up, test them first, Aim at low numbers if you've never done this before, five or 10. Try to keep that up for a few weeks. If you get to 80, awesome. If somebody's above 80, they're overachiever. Hang out with that person. And I'll see y'all tomorrow.